Vital Educators podcast is hosted by self-development coach, investor, and renowned educator, Ahmed Saqib. Ahmed will speak to fellow educators, young professionals, ordinary people like you and me about their life choices that allowed them to become successful in their careers. He will also delve deeper into the psychology and their perception of success, the good, bad, and the ugly. For young students, he will discuss techniques to help you with your learning and development. Ahmed is committed to helping you determine what you want to do in life. He will share his own life experiences of self-discovery and self-realization that has led him to launch this venture. So this podcast is for anyone who wants to know more about various paths to becoming successful in any profession or passion. Hi guys, Ahmed here from Vital Educators. So today I have a digital marketer with me. He is an absolutely amazing guy. Um, His name is David and he is an enterprise digital marketing specialist, um, mediator, an author of Road to Digital Marketing Profits, and uh, which is obviously now available on Walmart, Amazon and Books A Million. Thank you very much for coming on, David. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, Ahmad. Thank you. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you so much for allowing me to uh, kind of investigate and find out everything about you. So uh, I guess the first question that I have, and I'm very excited to have you on, is uh, how did you how did you actually get into digital marketing in the first place? What got you in here? Well, basically, I went to college uh, to study English. My goal was to be a writer. Um, that was my passion. My mother was an English teacher. And um, basically, uh, I had several internships. And uh, upon graduating from college, I discovered uh, that there really were very few, if any, decent paying writing positions in the geographic area where I lived. And at that time, the internet was still very new. Hmm. Um, So I, I had had one or two internships or summer jobs at different marketing agencies whilst in college. So once I identified that, I realized that, you know, if I was going to ever make a livable wage and, and stop, you know, subsisting on ramen noodles and spam, I was going to have to work for (laughs) marketing agencies as opposed to trying to um, get gainful employ as a writer somewhere. Hmm. So I suppose when you started your degree in English, did you not have a trail as to where you were going with that? Or did you just do it because you, you were interested in English? It was a combination of the two, really. I went in the direction that my heart dictated, that uh, my passions led me toward. And and ironically, I feel that I was a much better writer back then than I am today mm. uh, because really the educational system flensed away the joy that I had in writing. It's extremely difficult for me to write mm. uh, without some level of self-consciousness or, or the inner critic. Love it. Right. Uh, currently, because, you know, you, you sp- I, I spent years learning how to diagram sentences, mm. analyzing the structure, the syntax, the grammar, the punctuation. I studied film. I took theater. Uh, as a minor. I studied American literature. I studied uh, Latin American literature, um, medieval journalism, Mm. which was uh, quite uh, uh, boring, if I can say so. (laughs) Um, But, you know, by the time I finally finished my degree, I I really did not um, enjoy writing in a creative way. And Mm. when you work for agencies, I think it's safe to say most marketing and advertising agencies do not want individual idiosyncratic creativity per se. Mm. They may say they do, but they don't. And they don't know what that means if they do say that. What they want is for you to work at their behest. Mm. And that's why you see so much marketing collateral that we see today coming across as being tone deaf. Hmm. And it's one of the reasons why so many marketing agencies now, and this has been in ma- many of the tabloids such as Adweek, hmm. which is a very popular advertising uh, 
publication. Mm. Many, many of the biggest advertisers on the planet have taken a moratorium from social media because they just don't know how to step into the fray mm. with so much of the political animus here in the U.S., mm. but also with uh, so much activism stemming from this. Mm. You know, with the, the death of uh, Ahmaud Aubrey and um, George Floyd, they don't know how to be sensitive and responsive. So they're all taking a step back. And then you have, of course, Facebook saying, basically, we'll run anything. We don't care if if, if there's hate speech, we'll run it. If, if it's a complete falsity, we'll run true, it. True. As long as we're getting paid, we don't care. Mm. So many of the big, 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 uh, global power brands are just stepping back from it because they don't know they can't adapt. I think Facebook has changed their um, policies with regards to that now. Um, they said they did, yeah, yeah, and and that's why I think uh, Zuckerberg has actually stepped down from his executive position in the company as well. Um, and they they are they're trying their best to kind of up their their search research level. But I I still believe Twitter is another tool that you were talking about earlier as well. So based off of what you just said, uh, actually, let's just head back a bit. Um, it it clearly sounds to me that you're a perfectionist and. Um, and you are sure. definitely a creative. So, and you mentioned um, earlier about the idea that um, advertising agencies and people in the in the marketing sort of environment aren't as creative. Companies aren't as creative. They like to say that they will be, but they're not. So, what is creativity to you then? In that case, how do you define that for yourself? Mm. Yeah, creativity to me it can t- it can take multi- it can take a different level depending on the project but ultimately to me creativity means expressing yourself in an authentic manner that you the individual are pleased with so i'm a perfectionist in so far as i believe in doing the best i can so if a client for example hires me to do something i'm very particular um, I, I, I'm not going to work with the client if I don't truly, sincerely feel that this is going to be the best um, effort. You know, if you're a, a creative entrepreneur, service provider, digital marketer, web developer, graphic designer, what have you, we've all had clients, uh, who, you know, with the unattractive uh, sobriquets, tire kicker, uh, entrepreneur, grinder want to be we've all had that and it's essentially someone with an unrealistically low budget which is unfortunately the majority of clients don't know how to budget in order to get the results that they say they want it's not entirely their fault because they don't know they're new so you have to onboard them properly and tell them but you it's prohibitive to getting the desired outcomes they want so I'm a perfectionist in so far as I don't want to do something unless I truly feel that it's the best I can do. That that could be that could be difficult. You know, if I if I want to sit down and write a science fiction novel, for example, that's going to be very, very difficult or, or different than if a client hires me to create a website for them and write all the copy for it. I'm going to hold myself to different mm. standards. Okay, that's a very good point. So my question then becomes then, um, obviously a entrepreneur or somebody who's just starting a startup, starting a startup, um, wants mm-hmm. to get into this field and, and wants to uh, utilize all the marketing services that are out there and wants to utilize your expertise. And obviously they have an unrealistic budget. The question then becomes at what percentage of their gross yield or the, or any of the amount of money that they have sitting in a company, how, how much should they be spending on marketing? Yes. In your opinion. Yes, and I would tell you, not in my opinion, the U.S. um, Small Business Administration, the United States Small Business Administration, or SBA, um, I was actually a certified small business mentor for a subdivision of the United States Small Business Administration called SCORE. And for those out there listening with a facetious, odd sense of humor like mine, they're not referring to your ability to date. Um, (laughs) I forget what it stands for, but it had something to do with retired executives. And, um, but basically SCORE recommends 
that businesses that want to continue just to maintain existence invest, I think, I'd have to look this up in Google to make sure, but I suspect that it was at least 5%, could be 10% of their gross annual revenue back into marketing in order to continue existence. So whatever. That's not a lot. Of course. And now if you want to grow and continue growing, then it's at least 10%, at least. So, you know, let's be honest. I mean, if you're a lawyer, um, an accountant, uh, mm. perhaps a psychologist in private practice or a coach or something, you're going to have to invest probably at least a few hundred per month to get some measurable returns on investment. You know, the more you want, the more you have to be willing to trade in returns for that. And that's how I look at it from a Buddhist perspective. It's what are you willing to trade or become in order to get back what you say you want? If I tell you, if I say, Ahmad, I want to have enormous muscles, then you would look at me and say, well, you're not doing a very good job. You're a tall, skinny guy. But also, I'm not lifting weights for three or four hours a day, am I? Mm, true. And of I'm course, not. we need to increase the weight as well to make sure that it's enough load so your muscles <laughs> can grow. So you're absolutely right. Right, of course. So by the same token, if I tell you I want to be a writer, I need to spend two or three hours a day reading. And that's one of the reasons why I was a better writer in college than I am now, because I was reading vociferously, you know, for at least two or three hours every day. I had to do it. I had to do it. So writing a 30-page essay exam or something, you know, in order to, to eventually get the degree was not a big deal. All I had to do was drink a Red Bull and wait 20 minutes. <laughs> when I speak to you, I get the impression that uh, you really value creativity. Um, you, yes. You really, and, 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 and it clearly shows to me, at the, just by the way you speak, about your time at university and studying English or time prior to university, that you were very much into doing as much creative work as possible as a writer. The, yes. The question then becomes, is that somehow, some way along the line, your creativity kind of dies out. Uh, dies out to the point where as soon as you finish off university, your love for English and working as an English um, a teacher, for example, or any of the, in, in that academia uh, is, mm. is, is not there because you don't think that you can do more creative work. But at the same time, you then go work for marketing agencies, but you also say the same thing about working with a marketing agency, that they're not creative either. So my question <laughs> becomes, how... And why yes. would you stay in marketing? Why would did you not branch out to something else that will make a better creative out of you? There's an old saying that water seeks its own level. You go where you can go to the extent that you can. Um, and I do want to say very briefly when you're uh, leading up to the question, whatever country we go into in this world, whatever culture you you visit, whoever you interact with, you know, every person in every country on the planet, there's there are people who respect creativity and vision and dedication to that. If I go to Mexico and I talk about Jorge Luis Borges or Gabriel Garcia Marquez, um, you know, or uh, Miguel de Cervantes, and I say I have the utmost respect for these great writers. Oh, okay. You know, we understand. Whatever country I go into, whatever culture, if I say I love creativity, poetry, good poetry makes me weep. Great literature, you know, uh, affects you. It impacts who you are. You come away feeling like, oh my God, that really spoke to me as a human. Like religion almost. Because every culture, every religion has its holy book or holy books. And those are considered works of literature. So, you know, I, I do believe that that true creativity transcends time. It trans, transcends uh, politics. And well, it should. Otherwise, what purpose does it serve? You know, <laughs> of course. Um, um, but, you know, 
to, to touch on your other topic, I went into marketing because it's what there was available and I found it to be some outlet for creativity. And there was some uh, reward for that. You know, I made, there were some agencies that paid me well. Um, there were others that did not, <laughs> but some paid me well. And there were quite a few that I learned very valuable lessons from and got good experience from. And I also, you know, was still an editor for other agencies and I had uh, an enormous amount of varied experience. Um, but I'm at a different point in my life now where I've kind of slowed my role, as they say, and I'm looking for more meaningful um, expression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess you've become selective is, is the term to use, I presume. Yes, it's very similar to dating. My wife likes to use the dating metaphor a lot. <laughs> you know, if all you want is a casual fling, there's plenty of it. Mm -hmm. Well, you'd say that, but imagine we're guys. So uh, a young kid listening to this would be thinking, no, there isn't. What are you talking about? Um, oh, even, <laughs> no, even, even, you know, uh, no matter what you look like, there's someone who can love you for your personality. Uh, that's nice. There's someone who could uh, look at your, your, your spirit, or there's someone, if you have one leg, there's, so, there's someone else out there with one leg. That's if true. You're, uh, if you're a very sensitive, kind, uh, transgender person, there's someone else out there who can love you for your personality, for your spirit, or who thinks that you're a hot, hot person, you know? There's always someone uh, for someone else if you're willing to slow down and look at personality and, 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 and try to make that uh, connection. I think um, you're absolutely right. But uh, at at younger age, when I say, if I say, uh, I think, especially with guys, I don't know whether you'd agree with me or not, but definitely the guys that I come across with, and I include myself in that too. Um, when you're young, you're not looking for personality. I think men are very, very visual when it comes to courtship rituals. And we, we yes. uh, women, I've seen some unbelievably beautiful women with some seriously, no, I won't say, I wouldn't want to use the word ugly, but I would, uh, I'd, I'd rather use the word um I think it's a better word to use would be um, unattractive guys. I mean, or un, in, non compatible incompatible guys. Uh, so, so, <laughs> and you're absolutely right about personality. I think that would definitely work. Well, they see the, they could see the creativity or the vision or the artistry or the quirky personality, or perhaps that it could be the perhaps that they resonate with them, you know? But why do you think men aren't like that? But to be honest with you, now I am. I definitely am. I think I, I, now I look a lot when I'm meeting someone. I, I don't want to name any names, but I had a lady on uh, the other day on the podcast and we started we, we talked about it and I was fascinated by her creativity and, and, and obviously I, I don't know her. I met her for the very first time, but it instantly drew me towards her. I didn't really, before that, I didn't even look at what she, what she actually looked at in the first place. Mm -hmm. But now, now I think I'm becoming into a man where I am appreciating creativity. I'm, I'm looking at other things uh, and, and looking deeper into the person rather than anything else. But why is it that when we're young as men, we are, focused on on the visuals so much why do you think we are like that well i think uh studies have shown fairly conclusively that uh the female of the human species uh, i should say the human race because race is a term inappropriately used in my humble view we are all one race and that is the human race and um Females of the human race, emotionally, intellectually, and I think physically too, um, have been shown to evolve and mature at a quicker rate than males. That's true. That so is true. young men are more stuck on the, uh, the, the, the physical, I think, the more superficial appearances. And, um, you know, I, I was no exception, but again, water seeks its own level. When I was ready, when I was ready, I met my wife. If I had met her before I was ready, it wouldn't have been good for either of us. I would have been uh, the berserker. I would have been a source of chaos mm. in her are life. You a, are you a believer in fate in that case then? I was what? Uh, are you a believer in fate in that case then? Um. I'd say I'm 50-50 when it comes to fate. I'm not sure. I like to be the, um, the 
kind of an existentialist insofar as I like to believe that we determine our fate. I don't like the mechanistic view prescribing that we are all cogs in a glo- in a, a grand machine because I don't think it's appropriate to remove individual culpability. You are what you get out. Imagine, you know, I mean, if you look at COVID-19, listen, if everyone in the U.S. wore a mask, studies have shown conclusively. And and if there are listeners in the U.S. who disagree or think it's all a conspiracy, it's, 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 hog, <laughs> it's hogwash. Yeah, it's, true. it's hogwash. Just look, look up different doctors, Osterholm, uh, Dr. Fauci, anyone, if you want to find a Republican conservative doctor. I mean, anyone with, with a functioning cortex would tell you that if you wear a uh, a mask, it prevents the larger percentage of your spittle from yeah. reaching others. Yeah, 90%, they said. Yeah. So if everyone wore a mask and stayed a few feet away from each other, it, it, the economy would be much better. The cases would certainly slow. It might not stop them completely, but it would certainly slow it So to the extent that it would be manageable. So, you know, I, I think that we have a culpability. You get out what you put in in life. I like to mm. think that that there is some measure of fate. It's a very romantic concept. But I do also believe that we as individuals need to take responsibility for our actions. You get out what you put in. On a daily basis, I talk to what I say are potential clients because they will contact me by email or by phone or by Skype or whatever. And when they fixate on budget, we can't meet together. But if they talk to me about achieving important objectives that matter to them, then we can find a common ground. Let's work together to achieve your ends. That's true. And then as far as budget is concerned, it's very simple. Very, very simple. It's almost uh, remedial. If you want if you want to budget for digital mar- marketing, all you have to do is look at a newspaper. How much would it cost you to put an ad in a local newspaper for several weeks? There you go. There's your budget. How much should you invest for digital marketing? There you go. There's your budget. How much would it cost you to put a, a big billboard above an interstate? There's your budget. But, but I'm it's, sure at, when answering these questions, they're looking at the type of return they'll get as well, wouldn't they? So the bigger the budget, the more the return, I presume. Indeed. And therein lies the gray area, the uncertainty for them, where they compare, how much do I really need this? What is my pain or my perceived pain as opposed to the p- possibility for achieving objectives that they may or may not know? See, I mean, if you look, if you put an ad in a newspaper or on a billboard, the the advertiser can't guarantee you anything concrete. They can't tell you, Ahmad, you're going to put an ad in the newspaper and we guarantee you that you'll get 10 phone calls every day. They can't guarantee you that. And they sure as hell won't do it in writing. And they can't tell you, well, Ahmad, if you spend $5,000 to put a billboard above a major interstate, we guarantee you that you'll get these phone calls and in, in, in emails. Half of them will be grinders and tire kickers and people want to know what your temperature is or some nonsense, you know, or they'll try to sell you some other uh, crazy idea for something. So they, can, they cannot guarantee um, results, much less an outcome. Mm-hmm. But you're a digital marketer, right? So the billboard stuff wouldn't even apply to you. So presumably when- I'll do it. Would... <laughs> I'll, I'll spend. I mean, if someone gives me the money, I'll go and deal with the company. Nice. Okay, fair enough. That makes sense. But but sure. the, from, a, but from a digital marketing perspective, wouldn't you uh, be doing more of Facebook advertising and kind of honing yeah. in into the type of people that you want to market to? And that's why I think the whole general yes. trend has gone away from the billboards and the TV advertisements towards more Indeed. more more specific, I, which I should say, form of advertising, which is obviously digital marketing in that case. I guess my question then becomes, um, yes. How do you market your business now? What kind of avenues that you're using right now to market your business? <laughs> well, I enjoy podcasting. I enjoy being on podcasts, but I don't do what I don't enjoy. 
I'm at a different place in my life. I'm not trying to build a business. I'm not trying to accelerate growth. Hmm. Wow. I'm really not. I'm semi-retired. So what I is your goal? I have a wonderful then? wife. I have a chubby rabbit in the living room. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably secure. Thank God. Knock on wood. Mm -hmm. Knock on wood. Um, and I'm, I consider myself very blessed, especially in the, the chaotic world we find ourselves in right now. But if a client contacts me, fine, we'll talk. I'm not chasing after them. Whereas for a client who needs to grow a business, who needs to increase profits, that's much more serious. And I start with the website. I start with a marketing plan. Then I go into developing digital marketing assets and evergreen content. We come up with different strategies and we, we go from there. Hmm. We don't just throw rice at the wall and see what will stick. I grew up around military families. My father was in the military for like 35 years or something. So I grew up on military bases. And while I never joined the military and I'm not a militaristic person, hmm. Um, I do um, have a lot of respect for the way that they formulate plans and then from there go strategies. People think that strategies are plans. No, 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 no. A strategy is saying, I'm hungry. I have no food. I will get in the car and go find food. That's a strategy. It's not a plan. A plan is saying, I'm going to go to the grocery store, buy food that I need, but also food that I enjoy. I'll budget appropriately. I'll put some in my pantry, some in the refrigerator. Every once in a while, I'll eat out for something fun. I'll work from a budget. True. That's having a plan from which strategies come. The military doesn't say we're going to go and attack some country and go beat their behinds. Although you could probably say perhaps they do. It depends on the leadership. But you you get my point. So that makes sense. So so you you're essentially saying that you uh, kind of involve yourself or you want to involve yourself into knowing the intricacies of what you're marketing essentially, uh, i.e. the content as to how engaging is the content itself, oh, so yeah. that you can correctly predict. But that's a very bespoke approach, I must say, and I oh, must yeah. commend you for that because a lot of marketers don't do that at all. Wow. No, and there's and I would uh, I would. Um, cast uh, aspersions on them. Uh, <laughs> yes, I would indeed. I think they're, they're, they're slovenly. I think that they're, they're not respecting the profession. And I guess that's where I would say I'm probably closer to what you said, a perfectionist. I think that's a lazy way to do things. And I think you're giving the client a false expectation. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't think you're doing your best for mm -hmm. them. And if you're not doing your best, what's the point? Go work for an agency somewhere and follow orders from, from someone at a marketing agency or an ad agency then. If your heart isn't in it and you're not committed, do everybody a favor and just go get a job. Good point. Don't say, you, don't say you're something that you're not. And don't say that you're going to help these companies and these individuals who really need the help. You're ripping them off. True. And there's a lot of, uh, let's just use this. So um, me as a business owner right now, if I was looking for a, a marketing agency, what kind of things do I should, I should really look, obviously one of the things that mm. everybody says that you should look at is their successes. But now that we live in a digital world, you can literally, you would agree with me on this, I'm sure you would, is that you can literally engineer or create a fake success for yourself and uh, or te testimonials or whatever. And you can- Many, many do. Yeah, exactly. So, and especially, uh, exactly, a lot of people do that so what are, what are the key metrics that i'm looking for as a business owner to make sure that this is the company that i would want to work for and it would give me the profits that i'm looking for the first thing i would say is forget about asking for metrics hmm, interesting yeah so let me torpedo that right away metrics first of all a digital marketer who is experienced and professional and really hardcore serious they could show you metrics, but look, if you're not an experienced digital marketer as well, or if you don't have a background in psychology or user experience, you're not going to know what the metrics necessarily mean. 
It's like a doctor telling me how he's going to perform the surgery. I don't know what he's saying. I don't ask the dentist, make the enamel this color. What type of filling are you <laughs> going to use? It makes no sense to me. I don't know. Of course. So it doesn't make any sense. What you want to look for is, did they sit down with you and say, Ahmad, listen, sl slow down a minute, Ahmad. Look at me. Look in my eyes. Talk to me like a man here. Talk to me, brother. What are you trying to do and why? Why? Tell me about your family. How have things been for you? Is this real? What happens if this fails? Why, can, why not just do nothing? Why not just do nothing? What if you just said, eh, eh, I'll lay down on the couch, I'll listen to a podcast, or maybe I'll flip channels. <laughs> What's, if they're not asking you me meaningful, impactful questions about who you are as a, as a man or a woman, what does this mean to you, the state of the business first? because that's core to onboarding. They need to ask you, what do you need? Why do you need it? What have you tried before? What happened? Did it succeed? Did it fail? What, what brought us to where we are now? What does success mean to you? That will in turn define what the metrics should be. And the metrics are key performance indicators. We call them KPIs. Yeah, KPI. Right. Yeah. So if you don't know what those KPIs are, well, how in the hell are we going to know what the what, what the success is going to, you know, we have to, first we have to have the foundation before we can build the columns. And it goes right back toward having a marketing plan before we can have strategies. It's like me giving you fingers, but you have no hands. What are you going to do? Catch them with your mouth? I mean, you know. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And, and that's what most people do because they don't know any better. They don't know any other way. So when it comes to digital marketing, most people, and I see this very, very commonly with lawyers in particular and accountants, they go to Wix or Weebly or Squarespace and they're using a tool to solve a problem that they don't really fully identify or see the full structure of. So they're thinking, well, I'll go to this random tool which was never made to solve a legit problem. It's a tool, mm. you know, it, you know, it's like a do it. Your, I remember there used to be a do it yourself business card machine where you could type in what you wanted and then it would print out the business card and it was a generic business card. I mean, who the, you know, they went under very quickly because no one could use them. They're perforated. They looked awful. But everybody goes to Wix or Weebly or Squarespace or Vistaprint or Google Sites or on and on and on. Mm. And the thing is, could you make a beautiful custom website with them? Yes. Yes, you could. But if you don't know what your SEO should be, there it's for naught. If 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 you don't know what your content should be, they're they're for naught. They do nothing for you. Mm. It's, you know, valuable, it, invaluable. Right. Wow. It's like me going to the, I remember I'd have a root canal done mm. and I'll never forget. I went to the dentist. I had chipped one of my two front teeth. I was a rambunctious teenager, as they say, always getting beat up and thrown down and stuff like that. I took Aikido class and I, I loved it more than I was good at it. <laughs> and anyway, I had my big chip in my two front teeth. It was embarrassing. So I went to the dentist and uh, long story short, he was fixing my two front teeth. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I said, the doctor, have you ever had people come in here with, you know, using butterfly clips or paper clips and, you know, and toothpicks and whatever, you know? <laughs> and he said, he said, he said, actually, yeah. He said, I've had people come in here using paper clips and, and needles and, and, you know, uh, uh, baby pins and what have you, <laughs> trying to save money. But of course, it would get all swollen and infected. They would look ridiculous. And and it would end up costing them triple Wow, what they wanted to spend to fix the problem. Because now they're getting all these infections. They look ridiculous and their faces are swollen. They can't eat. And it's the same thing. You have lawyers who can't get any clients. You have accountants who can't reach new clients. and They don't know why. And I've talked to many of them. They're angry. They're resentful. They're working at Starbucks. They're, they're going out of business and they That's don't true. know why.
Mm. And the reason is simple. You're using a tool and expecting the tool to solve a larger problem. I can give you a hammer, but it won't build a house. No wonder you're so selective. It makes sense now. I mean, why would you want to work with that person anyway? Right, right. Well, you would want to work with them if you're desperate. If you're a young person, you don't know, uh, you know, I don't want to use an expletive. But if you don't know what you're doing, then you'll work with anyone. If you're desperate for money, which my heart goes out to people who are, you're going to work with anybody. But you have to onboard them. That's what I call it. Some people call so what, it a different what would your What would your advice be to, the, to, those, to that person then who is desperate, who needs clients, who would be listening to this podcast right now, who's a new digital marketer in the game? Yeah. What should they do? Yeah. My advice, first of all, is if you need help, I'll help you. It's oh, really simple. Go to dms.blue. If you ask me a legitimate question, I'll send you a legitimate answer. If you try to sell me some crazy smoke and mirror yeah, scheme, it happens. Yeah. Yeah. It won't work. I won't respond. Um, you can buy my book. Yeah, which is the road to digital marketing profiles for some of the people profits. who are listening right yeah. now. Profits, the road sorry. to digital marketing profits. And look, I'm not saying that to sell the book. I don't care. If you don't buy the book, don't buy it. Hmm. I'm not going to get rich off the book. <laughs> I wrote it because I was getting exacerbated or exacerbated. I, sh- I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. I'm I getting exhausted <laughs> by people asking me the same damn question every day. How much is a website? How much is SEO? How much is e-commerce? You're not buying one chicken nugget. You're trying to to build a business. Mm. It's a service. You don't ask a lawyer how much is a contract. Or you don't (laughs) ask the dentist how much is a new tooth. Yeah. What do they tell you? They say, well, sir or madam, sit in the chair. I have to see what the hell's going on in your mouth. Mm-hmm. I don't know how bad it's going to be. We have to look at the larger problem first. That's very important. You would never mm-hmm. dream of going to the doctor and saying, here's what's hurting me. It's going to cost, it's going to cost me this amount of money and you're going to solve it with this medicine and you're going to use this procedure. You would never dream of doing that. And the, the doctor would laugh you out of the office. Mm. Is it anywhere else people can access your, uh, is it DMS Blue? Are you on any, any other d- digital platforms? Or... Oh, I'm all. I am. I'm like a pox. I'm everywhere. Oh wow, are you? Which is a really bad metaphor for what we're going through right now. Let me stop that and rephrase that. <laughs> I'm like love. I am in the ethers. Nice. I am yeah. in the ethers. Reach out your hand and you could grasp me. Nice. Uh, seriously, it. if you go to Google and type in DMS dot blue, you will find me. If you go to Brilliant. Twitter, YouTube. Just type in dms.blue. I'm everywhere with dms.blue. It's my initials. Fantastic. It's what I do. And it's my favorite color. And it helps me to get dressed. You are the so. best. Thank you, David. This has <laughs> been such an honor having you on. I mean, uh, uh, you've answered every single question that I've asked you. And you've been nothing but generally nice. And uh, asking you these questions have really enlightened me as well and made me understand how I should approach um, digital marketing from a, from a business perspective as well. And anybody listening to to this um, to this conversation right now, you can definitely talk to David. I think, uh, obviously, you're you're such a gentleman. You definitely help people out. And, um, and, and yeah, uh, thank you so much for coming on and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Well, I had enormous fun talking to you, Ahmad. Always and a pleasure. I certainly appreciate your time and um, I'd um, always enjoy talking to you again. Keep in touch. Of course, I'd love to have you on because I think, the, the, you know, you are also an avid literary and uh, I want to pick your brain on that front. Obviously, we talked about all the professional and all the other stuff, but uh, I really want to ask you about creativity because I am tr- I have trouble being a creative. And of course, my business is on service and the type of content I create and the kind type of content that allows people to engage with me. So I think we should schedule another podcast regarding how should let's yeah, do it brother you have the link don't you um i have the link to what sorry to schedule another podcast oh yes of course i do yes indeed indeed i do yes yeah. let's do that brilliant yeah brilliant. let's keep do that in touch my man i i'm happy to do that i had a i had a, a ball talking to you 
Always a pleasure. Um, and if you want to email me, you can certainly email me with a question or an issue. I'm always happy I to keep do. in touch. That's so kind. Thank you so much. You're awesome. Yeah, that'll be a general pleasure. Thank you I, so much. I am. I am not awesome at all, but I think <laughs> I'm just. I, I just am doing what I think I'm doing and what I think people should do. Just common courtesy. I, I think we need a lot more Davids like you in this world. We definitely do. Because, uh, again, like nobody's as um, altruistic as you are, if that's the word, t- right term to use. I try. This was Vital Educators Podcast by Ahmed Saki. Hope you enjoyed. Please follow or subscribe for more content 